Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and I've got a pretty unique product here. Um, this is a lot of fun, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's a 2 by 54 millimeter binocular. Now, what are you used to in binoculars? 10 by 50 uh, or 8 by 42. This is super low power, only two magnification, with a very big lens, 54 millimeter lens on it. And the, the best thing of all is the field of view. It's a 36 degree field of view. So you're seeing a slice of the sky or the, the view out the window at 36 degrees. So massive field. Uh, your average uh, 10 by 50 binocular is maybe uh, five degrees, six degree, maybe up to eight degree for like a, some sort of an eight by 42, but 36 degrees. So why do you use this? So obviously it's not for higher magnification. It's, it's, it's about as low power as I've ever heard of binocular ever getting, two power. Um, it's not for high magnification. This is not going to replace your 10 by 50 astronomy binocular. Uh, this is going to work in addition to it. Think of this as enhanced naked eye astronomy, right? So uh, I was very impressed when I took this out in a dark sky site. Uh, you know how you go up in the mountains when you're camping and you step out of your tent and the sky above you is just glowing bright and there's thousands of stars and it just it, it just looks like you're, you're looking at a star chart, you know, because it's so bright. Well, this enhances that view. It gives you an extra magnitude to magnitude and a half of stars, somewhere in the middle. It's about four times more light than your naked eye. So when you look up at the sky, you see hundreds of more stars at that very low power and very wide field. So it's like looking at a star chart, only you're using the, the real sky as your star chart. So it's an absolutely beautiful view of constellations. So that's what this thing is mostly for. Looking at an entire constellation, seeing all the stars that comprise the constellation, learning about each constellation, seeing uh, what stars are in it that are just a little bit below, maybe your naked eye view. Um, for example, I think uh, in a dark sky site, your eyeballs can see down to maybe magnitude six, maybe six and a half if you've got really good eyes. Well, getting an extra magnitude, magnitude and a half, um, gets you down to plus uh, mag seven or maybe a little bit further. So. Um, those panning around like the Milky Way, seeing just hundreds more stars is a very pretty, pretty view. So a standard 10 by 50 binocular, 10 magnification, that's big enough where those smaller deep sky objects start to start to enlarge and you can see some details. So um, this being at two power, you're not gonna be looking at smaller objects, but there are some brighter deep sky objects that actually look quite nice. Uh, Andromeda Galaxy, which is huge in the sky. Uh, this is definitely visible, or you can see it uh, easily with this. Uh, Orion Nebula, absolutely. Bigger star clusters like the Pleiades, or like I said, panning around the Milky Way, uh, seeing those star cloud regions is quite nice. One thing I'm really looking forward to that I haven't actually tried out yet because we haven't had a good meteor shower come by since uh, I've, uh, so they've given me these. I think a meteor shower would be ideal for these. Uh, a meteor shower, you don't use a telescope or you don't use a binocular. It's supposed to be naked eye astronomy, right? You just get yourself a lounge chair and you just look up in a certain area of the sky. Um, and there's lots of bright meteors to see, but some of the fainter ones are just at the threshold of naked eye vision or maybe just below. Well, with a 36 degree field of view, just plopping yourself down in a lawn chair and looking up at a 36 degree swath of sky, you'll see a lot more meteors than you would normally. So I think for um, the Perseid meteor shower, the Leonids, Leonids uh, this is gonna be an excellent tool to have in your arsenal. The uh, lenses are fully multi-coated. They're, they're based on a Galilean design. Um, uh, so something like an opera glass uses this style. There's no prisms inside. But this is better than an opera glass because there's extra lenses in there to correct for some of the aberration. It's impossible to completely correct for aberration across such a huge field of view. But this is way better optical quality towards the edge than, say, your average opera, opera glass. Um, so we've enhanced the, the quality of the, uh, of the images. Uh, individual eyepiece focus. Uh, so left and right, just focus them until you're set. Bend them in and out here for uh, getting the right distance between your eyeballs. And they come with a case, so when you're not using them, they'll, they'll be protected. Plus there's caps for both ends. Okay, so I know what some of you might be thinking. The, the rule of not going above a five or a seven millimeter exit pupil, uh, just as a refresher, exit pupil is on a 10 by 50 binocular, 50 divided by 10. That's the five millimeter beam of light that comes out of it. And your own eyeballs only open up to a certain size, so anything bigger is just kind of wasted light. Well, this is a Galilean design, like I said, not a, uh, I think it's based on a Kepler design, Keplerian optics on a standard uh, refractor or um, binocular. Those have a real exit pupil and you can measure it. These guys, a Galilean design, it's a virtual exit pupil. So th that standard rule doesn't apply. 
Um, also, eye relief. The closer you get, the wider the field of view. There is no set eye, uh, eye relief distance for these, so these, the specs don't really work that way. The rules don't apply. The closer you get, the wider the field of view you see, and the uh, brightness is based on the magnification. It's, it's the square of the magnification, so again, they let in four times more light than your eyeballs. And the field of view is just based on the diameter of the lens. So 54 millimeter lens gives you a big, wide 36 degree field of view. All right, well, there you have it. I think I got to most of the points that I wanted to make about this. It doesn't replace your larger uh, 10 by 50 binoculars for binocular astronomy. It enhances your naked eye view of the sky to give you that star chart view of the sky. And it makes it actually a great learning experience if you want to kind of identify all the constellations that are out there. Um, even in some light polluted skies, it helps pick out all the stars in the constellation. So great uh, uh, project to go through all the constellations that you can see from your hemisphere and, uh, and try to catch them with the 2 by 54 millimeter uh, ultra wide angle binocular. Thank you very much. Clear skies.